high grade E3Ds. Now you may remember a couple of videos back I made one of these knight armages from the Warhammer 40,000 set. Uh, you can see the one that I made here. I've learned a lot since that process and I don't like this game I guess you make mistakes and you learn from them. Well I've made the second one now from the pack and I'm going to talk you through what I've done a little bit differently and how I think it's improved the end product uh, to to an nth degree so have a look see what you think and uh, be really interested to know what your thoughts are about the process that i took and what you thought i did right what you thought i did wrong and if you do like all things 3d printing and painting don't forget subscribe to the channel I guess like anything putting it together the second time round means less glue on your fingers, more glue on the model. It's come together easier, it's come together quicker and uh, as with the first model I am really really pleased with everything that's gone on. The only thing I've done differently I've left all the armour off. Now matte black for the primer and same as I've always done, uh, trying not to blow all the bits off the plate, I've given it a coat of matte black all over because I'm going to do a very similar effect but this time differently. I'm going to give it a bit of a zenithal highlight using white and uh, I'm just going to aim it into certain areas and try to catch it where the light would come naturally down onto the model and this does make a big difference when you put your colour on. Um, you can probably hold this with a blue, blue tack on the end of a brush but I've got it on my fingers as my fingers are constantly covered in paint. Um, now for the main section I've done exactly the same thing and zenithally highlighted it but I've also given it a bit of a, a highlight in other places as well just to add a bit of interest into the model for when the next colour goes on and that is going to be this Encarmine Red from the Army Painter Air range and uh, I love this colour and the more I put this on the more I liked it and there's always a risk with this base colour of the triad of colours or triad of colours to put too much on but I have tried to keep it to one angle to keep the back of it in a darker kind of shade as you can see there but I just love this paint I absolutely love this red it's a nice deep thick and I'm not putting it on too thickly I don't want to cover the complete thing I just want it to be shaded certain areas will be redder than other areas that will be blacker and that's the whole point of a zenith or highlight underneath and there we go you can pretty much see what it's looking like there now I've moved on to all the other bits and I've done exactly the same process trying to hit them from a certain angle and keep some of the white through before I've turned to the Archangel Red to try to highlight them a little bit. Now this Archangel Red is more of an orange colour and I applied this on and I was quite pleased with how it was all going until I'd finished the process and stood back and looked at it and then I thought, you know what, they look a little bit orangey and you can see what I mean there, there's a lot of orange in. So I've just pulled it back a little bit with some pure red which whipped into the screen there and I've just given it a little bit of a layer of that just to darken down the orange but not to give it a complete coat of red and ruin all the zenithal shading that you saw. Little bits exactly the same, no different and I gave everything exactly the same process. Now using some of this lead belcher uh, Citadel colour from the Citadel paints that I reviewed last time. I've got it onto a nice big brush and I'm going to use that dry brushing technique to cover it in this paint. Now I've never really used Citadel paints before but these paints I've got to be honest are are wonderful. I really really enjoyed using them and um, I'm putting more of a silver layer on this model than I did on the last one because I want more of that silver look to come through. The first time I did it it was a real dry brushing affair on the first model but on this one I'm putting it on a little bit thicker and a little bit in more area so that you could see much much more of the silver and I think that did give a better effect the second time round. And there we go that's what it looks like with the silver on and I am really 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 pleased with how that looks much more silver than the first one less of a dry brush but it's still using the similar technique you can still see the black coming through it but there's more of a definition to the silver now using exactly the same silver paint I've gone around the edges of the armour. Now like I said before I glued the armour on in a lot of places before I painted it which was a mistake so I've left it off this time and I'm just going to go around the edges and paint the emblems etc and uh, just give it a general coat uh, in the areas that you can see there. And there we go that's what it looks like. 
same again for all the pieces that have the same outer edge and I've done the same process exactly using exactly the same paint a very narrow brush and taking my time now onto the cowl uh, again same process I really enjoyed doing the uh, the cowl but I've also glued the side armor pieces the shoulder pieces on already which I didn't do last time and this makes it a little bit easier to paint and assemble so another thing I've learned from there I'm going around the center piece here with silver that I didn't do last time uh, I did do this bit last time which is around the window painted that silver and the little handle that you can see and that's what it looks like with the silver on I'm using the same dry brush technique on both of the guns and I'm using the same guns that I used last time. I could have changed them, but you know what? I like these guns. I think they've got great detail, so I've kept these too. And again, added more silver in than I did last time to make them more metallic looking and exactly the same to the uh, Gears of War gun that they've got here. I shouldn't say that really, but you know what I'm saying if you play Gears of War, the, the chainsaw gun. Taking some more of the uh, Mephiston Red from the Citadel range, I'm painting some areas on the gun that I didn't do last time. I'm just giving that a little bit of colour into it. And this red is a beautiful colour. matches the, uh, the Army Painter Red that I've used already. And uh, I'm really pleased with the match. I'm putting some around the face, uh, or the top of the cowl of this one. And I'm also going over the feet to give that a little bit of a red look too, which again is something I didn't do on the last model. Now some of this uh, some of this yellow paint from Citadel I'm going to use to add some chevrons on the side of the cowl. I wanted to add a little bit more than just a base colour so I'm using that yellow on each side to add in the first layer of the chevron colour which is this yellow. It's a really really wonderful colour and as you can see there both sides are done. Now I'm just going to divide it in half with a little bit of black, divide it in half again and then divide it in half on the other side again to equalize it into quarters and then I'm going to use this paint to draw a 45 degree ish angle down across where I've marked it off as you can see and I'm going to do that on all the areas and I'm going to paint in uh, two of the areas black and leave two of the areas in the yellow paint and that will create the chevrons just taking my time to follow the lines you don't have to do this bit but again I just thought it added to the final detail of the model and that's what it looks like when it's all finished and done now I've gone across the model in lots of little bits and, I've, and I'll show you the paint here that I've used for that just to highlight some areas but I've also used some of this stuff, some null oil to just go over certain areas to darken down the silver a little bit and just add a little bit of depth and a little bit of background to that and I'm going to use exactly the same null oil just uh, highlighting some of the studs on the top of the model and certain areas as I've gone round to darken up some of the, uh, the little skulls if you like and some of the metal work just to give it a little bit of an aged look just like that bit there. Same again on the gun this is null oil going on and uh, really like this stuff there'll be a link in the description where you can buy this from. Uh, once I've done that I'm now going to glue the armour on and I could spend much more time on the armour because it was off the model. Now some of, of this blood for the blood god, uh, same as the first time round, on a nice thick uh, toothbrush splattered across the gun to give it that uh, I've just cut up some nasties look and I'm going to use a brush to thicken some of that uh, blood across the chains. And some Tesseract Glow over a layer a base layer of white which is something else I didn't do last time and the tesseract glow now absolutely stands out and shines so a base layer of white followed by this tesseract greeny glow and uh, the eyes are popping like uh, like never before again another improvement on the last model I feel and I've done exactly the same on certain areas of the gun just painting with a low light of white and I'm going to pop the green in and that will make it stick out an awful lot more Popping the cowl on, which is pretty much the last part of uh, fitting this thing together. And again, the shoulder pads made it so much easier to paint the whole thing in unison. And there it is. I think it looks better and crisper this time around. I've still got to add the decals and I've got to do the base. And if you check my previous video, you can see how I've done the base in the terrain kit. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something from it. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you next time.